So selflessness, or selflessness is a noun, but selfless is an adjective. Selfless is an adjective, and it is having little or no concern for oneself. Having little or no concern for oneself, especially with regards to position, with regard to fame, with regard to money, etc. Praise the Lord. Amen. Selflessness, to have little or no concern for oneself, with regards to position, with regard to fame, with regard to money, and so on. It also means to be unselfish. Praise the Lord. To be unselfish. So, to be selfless means you don't attach your mind, you don't attach your focus to fame, you know, with all the social media around us now. Every now and then you want to post and show to the world, yay, look at me, I am this, and so on. To be selfless means you have little or no concern to fame. Praise the Lord. Little or no consent to fame. Little or no consent to money. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in First Timothy that in the latter days, the last days before Christ comes, people shall be lovers of money. That means people will not be selfless. Also says that to be selfless means you have little or no consent to position. Praise the Lord. See, people fly their titles all around. Fly titles all around. Little or no consent to position. That is selflessness. If somebody wants to introduce himself or herself to you and they start by listing all their qualifications and their titles before you, that already speaks for itself. There are some people you will interact with them for a long time, you will not even know what their title is. You will not even know what their position is. All they are interested in to you is the service that they give to you. Praise the Lord. The service that they give to you. So, selflessness. Selfless is one of the most important character of a Christian. Praise the Lord. It is one of the most important character of a child of God. And Jesus spoke this to us in Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Mark 12, 28 to 34. It says, Now one of the scribes had come up and heard their debate. Jesus was discussing with other scribes and Pharisees. Noticing how well Jesus had answered them, he asked Jesus, which commandment is the most important of all? Verse 29, Mark 12. Jesus replied, This is the most important. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. 31. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than this. Praise the Lord. And then verse 32. Right, teacher, the scribe replied. You have stated correctly that God is one and there is no other but him. And to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself, which is which is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that the man had answered wisely, Jesus said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. You are not far from the kingdom of God. We pray this morning that not only will you not be far from the kingdom of God, but you shall actually be in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You shall actually be in the kingdom of God. This scribe had embraced the scriptures, but he needed the Son of God who has life. The Bible says, he who has the Son has life. 
Praise the Lord. He who does not have the son does not have life. So, the only step that he had to take into the kingdom of God was to believe in the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 So, we pray that those who are close to the kingdom of God will actually make it into the kingdom of God. So, our topic this morning is selflessness. It is so important that it is the second of the two commandments that everything is summed up into. He says, Verse 30, it says, and you shall love the Lord your God with, no, verse 31. It says, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. For us to love our neighbors as ourselves, we have to be selfless. We have to be selfless. Or we have to be unselfish. Um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 14 the entire law is fulfilled in a single decree Apostle Paul writes love your neighbor as yourself Jesus was agreeing with and he was also expounding an Old Testament law of Leviticus 19.18 which says do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against any of your people but love your neighbor as yourself i am the lord praise the lord each time god speaks something and he attaches that last phrase right there i am the lord i look at that last phrase as god's signature praise the lord that is god's signature right there it says and you shall love your neighbor as yourself i am the lord political campaigns are going on when you are watching tv right now and then there is an ad, and then there is time for advert, uh, for adverts. A political campaign will just pop up, and after they have said everything they want to say, and you see the candidate say, "My name is this, and I approve of this message." <laughs> Praise the Lord! That is God's <laughs> approval of that message. <laughs> when God says something and He attaches it, "I am the Lord," that is final. That is confirmed. That is. There is a song we sing, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Praise the Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. That has been settled in heaven. It says, I am the Lord. That means this is important. To be selfless to the point where you love your neighbor as yourself. That is what God wants. Praise the Lord. That is what he wants. In James chapter 2, verse 8, Apostle James says, If you really keep the royal law stated in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. Amen. Have you ever asked yourself why James calls that the royal law? Royal means something that pertains to kings, to queens, and to sovereignty. Amen. Royalty. James calls it the royal law. The Bible says we are kings together with Christ. Praise the Lord. We reign together with the Lord. That's why James called that the royal law. The law for kings. Are you a child of God? You are a king in the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible calls him king of kings. And lord of did you ever know you are a Lord? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are a Lord. Amen. And Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So James calls that the royal law. So what do people think of as selflessness out there in the world? You know, when you come into the kingdom of God, you start learning the ways of God. Praise the Lord. When you come into the kingdom of God, you start. I remember when I just gave my life to Christ, I will pick up my Bible that I want to read. Sometimes I will spend quite some time reading. I will really not understand much, and I will be troubled in my mind. I said, I really want to know scriptures. I really want to. And the good thing about God is that when you keep seeking him, you find him. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you keep seeking God, you will surely find him. You, um, he will need patience in you, but you will find him. Amen. Amen. The patience is just to build the character in you that will help you for the journey. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. that will help you for the journey. So, I used to pick up my Bible to read, and I would try to read and read. I would not understand. Eventually, I started understanding little by little. And then, from there now, even inspiration <coughs> will start come to me. Amen. Amen. So, Yeah, so when in the world we had a different mentality, we had the ways of the world, we would think like the world, we speak like the world. But when we leave the world and we come into Christ, our mentalities start changing. Praise the Lord. We start thinking differently. We start talking differently. Our confessions become different. Amen. Out there in the world, people will say negative things. But when you become a child of God, you have to start confessing positively. Amen. You have to start confessing scripture. That's right. You don't confess doctrines. You confess scripture. Praise the Lord. So, now, out there in the world, looking at this topic, selflessness, what does the world think about selflessness? And then we'll see what Jesus Christ thinks about our own selflessness. Praise the Lord. Out there, when somebody is thinking about selflessness, for them to be selfless means if your friend is in need, you help that friend. Praise the Lord. It means that if your spouse needs something, you minister to your spouse. It means that if a sick person, or if you come across a sick person, you help the sick person. Amen. Amen. That is the standard of the world. If you are doing that as a Christian, you are just at the standard of the world. Praise the Lord. You are just at the standard of those who do not know him yet. Jesus extended selflessness beyond normal expectations. Number one, he said that you should love your enemies. Number two, he said you should pray for those who persecute you. He took it to another level. Praise the Lord. He took it to another level. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. He says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the sons of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. If you love those who if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Why did Jesus say that? Because even unbelievers do that. Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Praise the Lord. Do not even Gentiles do the same? And then verse 48, that we like to quote, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Praise the Lord. Amen. So verse 43 says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Do you know there is a brand of Christianity today? I mean Christianity, not even the world, that practices this. Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. When you start to pray, let my enemies be scattered by fire and by thunder. <laughs> love your Praise the Lord. Love your enemies. That is scripture. He says, in the days of old, it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemies. But I tell you, do not only love those who love you, love even those who hate you. Praise the Lord. Jesus took it to another level. Amen. He says, you have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Why does God want us to love our enemies? 2 Peter 3 verses 8 to 9 tell us, Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but everyone 
to come to repentance. Praise the Lord. God does not want the death of Jesus Christ to be wasted. Amen. 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 He does not want the, the, the death of Christ. Christ underwent a lot on the cross to die for the sins of the world. So even those people who hate us, God is patient with them. Oh, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. It is just telling us how patient God is. Amen. Amen. How patient God is. A thousand years is like a day. God is willing to be so patient that as many as possible. If God was not patient, Apostle Paul who wrote most of the New Testament to us, if there were Christians on earth in his day who were praying the by thunder by fire, maybe he would have gone to hell. Amen. Amen. But God is patient. He says, love your enemies. Today, they are your enemies. Tomorrow, they may be your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, they may be your brothers and sisters. So, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Amen. Amen. He says that you should be like your father in heaven. He causes his son to shine on the good and the bad. There are people on earth who curse God every day. There are people on earth, there are satanists on earth, they pray to Satan every day. We had it here in our fasting and prayer um, a week ago. They pray to Satan every day. But in the morning, God will not say, let my son only shine on those who are praying um, to me. Let my son only shine to those who call my name. No, God does not say that. Those same satanists, they get into their cars, they drive on, um, on the street. God protect them from accidents because he cares for their souls. He's giving them a chance to repent. Praise the Lord. He's giving, he says, be like your father in heaven. He does not discriminate in his... He blesses even those who curse him. Hallelujah.